Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm here with Mr. Marek Maciejewski, who is the Product Development Director of TCL Europe. And we are actually here in Hong Kong, which is only a short drive away from Sunjin, where I visited TCL's factory. Now, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you, Vincent, that you are with us. So it's very, very surreal to meet you so soon again after IFA GPC. But I saw lots of things at your panel factory and I was impressed by the technical information that you were very transparent and honest to give out. Now, one thing that may be confusing to many viewers is the difference between 8.5G and 11G panel factories. And we visited both. Can you explain the difference to our viewers? Uh, in TCL, we have uh, two panel uh, factories. We have uh, G8.5. Uh, here we process mother glass, which sizes 2.5 meters times 2.2 meters. We can cut uh, six 55-inch uh, panels or eight uh, for the uh, nine-inch panels. Uh, we have also option to cut uh, three times 65 and six times 32 together. And in uh, generation 11, which we call G11, uh, uh, the mother glass is uh, 337 times uh, 294. Uh, so, in fact, it is 9.9 .9 square meters versus 5.5 .5 square meters in G8.5. In G11, we can cut six 75-inch uh, panels or eight 65-inch panels. We have also option to cut, for example, uh, three times uh, 85 and uh, six times 40 inch. So, uh, with this uh, two fabs, and uh, we currently have two lines in G8.5 and one line active in G11, one line under construction in G11, we can cover all key sizes which are today required for TV business, like 55, 65, 75, 85, all the options. And when you discuss this with us journalists, you mentioned that optimization of the panel size is very important to reduce wastage. Can you explain a bit more? Well, uh, key uh, to be able to deliver uh, very good uh, panel cost is to use uh, the glass almost 100%. So if we cut uh, six times 55 from uh, 8.5 generation fab, our utilization is uh, close to 100%. The same uh, target we have for uh, G11. We uh, designed the size of the glass uh, in a way to be able to cut uh, 8 times 65 or 6 times 75 also with utilization of the glass which is uh, close to 100%. Then of course uh, there are also other options uh, for this uh, panel fabs. For example uh, from G11 we can cut maximum uh, 150 inch but if we do it we use only 60% of the glass and the rest of the glass uh, cannot be used. During this Sunjun tour, we also visited your module and TV assembly factory. Can you briefly explain, I know it's not going to be easy, but can you briefly explain the process of building an actual television? Well, uh, we start this uh, from the mother glass, so uh, we use uh, Ashai Glass uh, Corporation uh, glass uh, in this case. Uh, this company provides to us mother glass. Uh, then uh, we take two sheets of the glass and in the panel production uh, fab uh, we uh, put these two sheets uh, together, inject uh, liquid crystals, also add color filter uh, to it and then at the end we have burr cell and then we add electronics, so all the components by which we can drive the panel and we call it on bonding, so we have so-called open cell. Then to make the TV, we have to use open cell and add the backlight. In this case, uh, it can be either direct LED backlight with LEDs behind or edge backlight with LEDs in the bottom and then the light guide plate. Then between uh, uh, this uh, source of the light, we need uh, some optical sheets uh, to achieve uh, high uniformity. And by putting together open cell and uh, backlight, we have module. Today, module is also part of the TV cabinet. So we add uh, front frame and then by adding to this electronics, which is different for Europe, which is different for US because of different systems. And uh, by adding power supply and stand, we have full TV. So just in a few words, you have full TV production process. Okay, now at this event, you unveiled your 65-inch 4K mini LED. 
And one thing that struck us was your emphasis on REC 2020 color gamut. Can you first of all explain why you think REC 2020 is important? Well, if you look uh, on uh, C1931 uh, uh, graph, so uh, and you plot on it uh, pointer gamut, uh, so colors uh, which you can find in the real world, which can be reflected by in real world by the sun, you see that uh, if uh, you want to fully cover it and by the triangle, triangle uh, of uh, three primary colors, you need REC 2020. But at the same time, you also realize that. Uh, uh, around 40% of this coverage uh, will be artificial colors. Colors uh, you can generate artificially, but you will never catch by any camera in the real world. So then we know that uh, DCI today, coverage of DCI is the step. The next step is to cover REC 2020. And then the key question is how to achieve it. There are different ways and different technologies uh, to do it. And step by step, uh, we will do it. And when you say step by step, I think you listed a number of ways that you can gradually expand the color gamut to eventually achieve REC 2020. Can you again briefly detail the steps that you can go from one level to another to achieve REC 2020? Well, uh, the first step, uh, so is just uh, the standard TV, so TV with white LEDs, uh, the TV we see in shops. Then the next step is uh, uh, to use uh, dual phosphor, so uh, separate red uh, and green phosphor. Uh, uh, added to blue LED, so by this uh, we can uh, narrow uh, wavelengths uh, of red and green uh, color and uh, achieve uh, today around 70% uh, of the coverage of uh, REC 2020. In uh, general theory we can uh, go I think uh, up to 80%, but it's a limit for this technology because of wavelengths of red and green color. Then another option uh, is uh, quantum dot. So we use uh, blue LED, we use uh, quantum dot uh, enhancement film and by this uh, we have uh, green and red which is more narrow today uh, around 30 nanometers is achievable. So generally with this technology we can go up to 90% and then to go from 90% above uh, the challenge starts uh, so there are different steps we can do uh, one we can uh, revise color filter to make it more narrow but if we do it we lose some of the light output and then efficiency drops so then uh, the brightness will also drop we have to generate more light behind then uh, what could be uh, the next step uh, uh, we can use uh, perovskie uh, together with uh, red quantum dot and by this uh, we again narrow uh, green uh, wavelength and then uh, we gain additional uh, one or two percent. Then the next step uh, could be again to go with revised color filter but what we see today uh, generally limit is to go to up to 95, 90 maximum 97 percent. The question is at the end if we really need 100 and but by doing 95, uh, 97 we almost cover uh, pointer gamut. Okay, the 4K mini LED that you are unveiling, well, you have actually unveiled at this event, is certainly very impressive. But you also showed us your roadmap for 4K mini LED with even more zones. Can you explain a bit about that and when we can actually expect 8K mini LED and future technologies from TCL? Well, so the first step for us is to introduce this year 65 uh, mini LED with, as you said, 768 zones. This we will do with uh, 15,360 LEDs. Uh, we group them into uh, 4 times 5, so 20 LEDs per each zone. And uh, why we have to do it? Because uh, we want to uh, put LEDs as close as possible to uh, open cell and then achieve thickness uh, of the TV set uh, below 10 millimeters. So uh, to have TV set very slim and uh, very nice. Uh, then uh, this is uh, for us the first step. Then the second step is to increase number of zones. So why we have so many 15, more than 15,000 LEDs? Because we need, we want to achieve high uniformity and also very slim product, uh, product which will not generate heat. Uh, so uh, the next step will be to increase number of zones, how we can do it. Uh, uh, we can do it by uh, 
uh, using, for example, four LEDs or six LEDs in one group. And by this, we increase number of zones. You saw uh, during my presentation how it will improve uh, driving of uh, the backlight. Then the next step, generally uh, the next step uh, is uh, if we use this 15,000 uh, LEDs as basis, so to go up to 15,000 uh, zones uh, and uh, for this we need active matrix uh, mini LED uh, for which we will use oxide backplane, uh, glass backplane produced by our panel factory uh, to do this uh, uh, backlight. Then, okay, uh, generally uh, today we use blue, on top of blue we use uh, quantum dot enhancement film, but potentially another option is to switch to RGB uh, and then uh, to help achieving uh, wider color gamut. Marek, really thank you for your time explaining all this technical stuff to us. And I think that this is going to be a groundbreaking interview video, not only because it's filmed against the iconic Hong Kong skyline, but also it is filmed in HLG and I will try to master it in HLG HDR. Thanks again, Marek. Vincent, thank you and thank you that finally you listen and you do HLG uh, interview as we discussed uh, in Spain. Yes. I will try to make your eyes pop, definitely. Okay, thank you, Marek.